normally at this time of year we'd like to have 160 to 180 kilos of grass dry matter ahead of the cows. Across the Glanbia patch we appear to be averaging uh, well under that and even below 130 in some cases. At 180 we'd normally say we have 10 days grazing ahead of the cows and that certainly is not the case today on many farms and that trend has been confirmed by a fall in milk yield and a fall in milk solids in many cases. Uh, for spring calving herds, particularly those calving with a mean calving date, let's say in the middle of March, there is a substantial number of lactation days left ahead. And I think our real objective now is to try and minimize any drop off or decline because it'll catch us for the rest of lactation. And just maybe to put that in context, um, we'd normally expect post peak albeit our cows didn't peak maybe as high this year as normally but we'd normally expect them to, to lose about two and a half percent per week in yield from here to the end of lactation and if you're a 100 cow herd today milk and 25 litres of milk 26 litres of milk the difference between losing a half a percent extra uh, in other words increasing the drop off to three percent would actually reduce your output by about 25 26 thousand litres over the course of the year if you're currently at 23 that differential would reduce your output by about 22,000 litres so a very significant economic impact in terms of output so really what we want to discuss very briefly is what strategies we can adopt to try and stem that decline right now the forecast looks like it's going to be dry and warm with no rain absolutely at all in sight uh, over the next week or 10 days if grass falls well below where it is today then there's a significant gap to be fulfilled and I suppose there's practical dimensions to that as well so if we took just a standard average spring calf and cow medium genetic merit medium weight we'd normally want her to be consuming 18 kilos of dry matter per day as uh, you know to support her current milk yield and normally grass plus two and a half kgs of concentrate would actually do that job this time of year but on many farms where the grass deficit uh, or the grass availability will be only about two thirds of that there's going to be a gap there of six kgs of concentrate required and and there will be lots of differences from farm to farm so each farm will have to you know will have to adapt the strategy based on the farm scenario uh, looking at where we are silage wise i think i would be saying in the first instance and taking simplicity into account i would be inclined to increase the power allowance up to six kilos where that is required if the gap is bigger than that I think the next thing we need to do is to consider maybe using some bales that we pulled off when grass was in surplus or out of paddocks and um, you know for the next couple of kilos or whatever and we may even particularly in the very southern parts of the country in southeast where grass grass is um, absolutely minimal uh, we may, may need to consider two things one is either to start grazing some second cut ground or the other is to uh, maybe put in a straight like sire hulls or pulp uh, that said, today's soya hulls is probably the most suitable and the most available and the best value. Um, so I would consider that strategy. The choice that one has really depends on the farm structure, whether there's barrier space or whatever. And one of the questions I suppose has come up over the last few days, how soon can you actually open a silage either in bales or pit after ensiling it? And ideally the answer is three weeks, uh, both in terms of stability of fermentation and in terms of avoiding any nitrous uh, gases that might have built up in, 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 in those. So really, the, you know, it needs to be considered in context. I think without measuring and managing grass and allocating it, it's very difficult to, to, to manage the situation. So I'd encourage everybody to do that. I think a few other small things that need to happen. Try to maintain the rotation at 20 days if at all possible and fill the gap on that basis. It takes grass to grow grass and if you tighten it up too much and shorten the rotation there are other implications and that shorter grass will grow less grass so it actually worsens the problem. And also watch very carefully the amount of water available to cows over, the, over that warmer drier period. Uh, they need a hell of a lot of water so and uh, you know they tend to go at the same time for it. So it needs to be in the paddock available all the time and keep, it, keep an eye on things like that. Then, and that's really about it. I think the best advice is if you're in doubt, talk to your um, 
plan B, a business manager or whatever, there are options above and below even the feeding rates you give. We'll have two new products out there next week to address the situation for farmers. One we're calling Summer Sustainer, that's a 14% targeted really at a 3 kg feeding rate. And we have a lactation sustainer, 16%, where we're replacing more grass. And that will actually be um, you know, suitable for feeding at around the 6 kgs. But we also have products for smaller inclusion and larger inclusion and a range of straits available. The main thing is talk, seek help uh, and plan.